All right, so today's lesson covers solution stoichiometry. It's very similar to some stuff we've already done yet again. Um, but again, this time the focus is just going to be on solutions. So in other words, things with solutions such as concentration uh, or even just how many liters uh, exist uh, of a certain quantity of, uh, of a substance in a, in a chemical reaction involving solutions. Anyway, what I do have to kind of preface this with today is this is not in your main unit D booklet. This is actually in that solution stoichiometry handout that I gave out separate uh, to this. So you want to uh, take that out, of course. There's only two examples we're going to go through. There's not really any preamble or anything to this because it really is more or less the same idea. Uh, let's get going. Uh, so like I just said, we're covering solution stoic. This is where we'll know details such as concentration about solutions being mixed to perform chemical reactions. And we're looking to find other details such as moles or mass, pretty much whatever, right? Uh, again, this is not in our unit D uh, booklet. So I have that new handout for you. Uh, it's going to be a pretty quick lesson today, including the practice time. It, this is, this is going to fly. So anyway, let's, let's roll. So first things first, we'll like jump right into the example. Uh, a 250 milliliter sample of 1.50 moles per liter solution of calcium chloride is reacted with an excess solution of potassium carbonate. What mass of precipitate will you obtain? Uh, there's a lot to kind of piece out from this. First thing though, is we want to write a balanced equation, right? So we want to figure out what type of reaction we're dealing with uh, and get a balanced equation going. First things first, notice we're combining calcium chloride with potassium carbonate. It would help if we knew what those were, right? So calcium chloride is just calcium and chlorine. Uh, but of course, that's an ionic compound. So you got to make sure they're balanced uh, in terms of their ionic charges. Well, calcium has a two positive charge. Chlorine has a one negative charge. So swap and drop. And you're going to see it's CaCl2. So one calcium and two chlorines. Uh, potassium carbonate. Carbonate's a polyatomic ion. Potassium is just K. So we're going to have K, but potassium, or sorry, carbonate has a two negative charge and potassium is a one positive charge. So once again, swap and drop, there's going to be a two on the potassium, we'll need two of them, and one carbonate, carbonate is CO3. So there you go. Uh, so if we're going to write our balance equation, uh, we have CaCl2 plus K2CO3. Uh, and this is going to clearly form something, but it also gave us a little bit of hint here. It says, uh, figure out what reaction type you're dealing with. Uh, well, in this case, because it's a compound plus another compound, it's, it's probably going to be a double replacement reaction. So in other words, this calcium is going to go on to the carbonate, and this potassium is going to go on the, uh, the chlorine. Uh, so that's going to produce calcium carbonate. Calcium, again, had a positive two charge, and carbonate has a two negative charge, so they're like a perfect match. So there we go plus uh, potassium is a positive one and calcium is a negative one, so it's KCl. So once again, also a perfect match. Uh, it does say it needs to be balanced though, so uh, we have to look at how many of each we have on both sides. We have two potassium here, one potassium here, so maybe I'll start by putting a two here. That gave me two chlorines and two chlorines over here, so that's good now too. One calcium, one calcium, and one carbonate, one carbonate. That was it. We only had to put a two in front of there. That was it. That was like the easiest thing to balance we've had in a while. Uh, now, one other thing I want to do here, usually, at least recently, we haven't worried about the states of matter, but I want to go back to the question. I want, you, uh, I want you to notice that the question was asking, what mass of precipitate will you obtain? Remember that a precipitate is just something that forms a solid uh, after two solutions are mixed. That was back from our, our solutions unit, unit C. Uh, so in other words, we're looking for whatever the solid is here. Uh, the question did tell us that the calcium chloride and the potassium carbonate were both solutions, so we know those are both aqueous. But we also need to look at these two and figure out which one of those is actually going to be a solid. And of course, to do that, you need to check your solubility chart. And that was in your data booklet. Uh, so again, just having to look at the solubility chart and see which one's going to be which. Uh, if you look at KCl uh, on the, uh, the solubility chart, you'll see that uh, chlorine has its own column. Uh, and potassium is, is listed as it's like it's going to be it's going to be very soluble. So in other words, this one's going to be aqueous. But if you look at calcium carbonate, carbonate has its own column. And the only ones that are very soluble are group one ions and I think NH4. Uh, so clearly calcium isn't uh, lumped into those. Calcium is actually group two uh, ion. Uh, so in other words, this is actually going to form a solid because it's only going to be slightly soluble according to our solubility chart. Therefore, it's going to be our precipitate. So really, we're going to be focusing on finding this guy right here. OK, moving on. Step two, calculate the number of moles given. 
But once again, these, these questions like in, in our booklets we have, it really breaks us down to a long process. When I, when I do this, usually I would like literally just say, okay, I know I have this much concentration of this much calcium chloride. So I'd write it underneath this, um, but this question is nice. It's breaking it down for us. I'm not gonna complain. Uh, so the number of moles of given, keep in mind we had uh, this concentration, 1.50 moles per liter uh, of this much sample of calcium chloride. Use your units to help you out figure what equate, help you out to figure out what kinds of equations you're dealing with here. Since it's moles over liters, we need to say that this is equal to some amount of moles over some amount of liters. The focus is always finding your moles because with a balanced chemical equation, your moles is what can connect all these other things. Anyway, uh, we have 1.50 moles per liter. We'll set this equal to some amount of moles, which we don't know yet. So we'll say N over some amount of liters, which is this, just turn it into liters. So it's 0 0.250 liters. And then to find our number of moles, we just have to multiply this over to the other side. So N is going to equal 1.50 times 0 0.250, and that is 0 0.375 moles, and that's of calcium chloride, right? Really important to note. Next part, use your molar ratio to calculate the moles of the required chemical. By molar ratio, we're talking about the numbers, like the coefficients that are in front of all these right here. Almost all of them have a one. That's really useful. The only one that has a two is this guy right here. So if we look at this amount of moles that we found for calcium chloride, that actually represents one part, because if we go back to our chemical equation, you'll see calcium chloride is just one part, right? So we have one part, and that's the 0 0.375 moles. I know I'm flipping around a lot here, but you guys have it all on one page. I, I kind of have a disadvantage. Anyway, we, we have this amount of moles of that one part. I want you to notice what we're looking for is the precipitate. And if you go back to your chemical uh, equation, you're going to see the precipitate is also one part. So we're going from one part just to another one part. It doesn't get any easier than this because we know what one part is in terms of moles. So therefore, it's just 0 0.375 moles is also how much of our uh, calcium carbonate that we have, right? So this is how many moles we've got. Last part of the question though saying, what is the mass of the precipitate? Well, of course, we know now how many moles of precipitate we have. To turn that into a mass, we need to find the molar mass, the molar mass of calcium carbonate. And to do that, of course, you just need to use your periodic table. Notice we have one calcium, one carbon, and three oxygens. So calcium is 40.08 plus one carbon, which is 12.01, and then three oxygens, so three times 16.00. And that's going to equal a grand total of 100.09 grams per mole. Remember, your molar mass is what connects your number of moles to your mass. So now that we have this molar mass in grams per mole, just set this equal to some number of grams, which is what we're looking for, over some number of moles, which we already had. It was 0 0.375. Just multiply that 0 0.375 over to the other side. Uh, and then watch the number of sig digs you have. We've got three here and three here. So I guess our answer is going to have to have three sig digs. Uh, so that's going to be 37.5 grams. And just like that, we were able to figure out how many grams, so what mass of precipitate would form from this. Basically, it's the same thing we've already been doing. You guys are getting, probably getting really sick and tired of this, and I don't blame you. Uh, tomorrow's lesson, uh, so Wednesday, according to how I'm doing this right now, uh, is about titrations, and that's also kind of more or less the same as what it was before, but at least we'll look at, uh, you know, a new experimental method with that. So we'll actually see how experiments are done with that. And it's actually quite interesting. I quite like that. But anyway, we got another example we're going to do here. So this other example, basically the exact same idea. Uh, I would say it's not even any more difficult or, or, or any more easy uh, for that matter uh, than the other. Uh, so here's the example. What is the unknown concentration of a 350 milliliter solution of sulfuric acid if it requires 500 milliliters of a 0 0.510 mole per liter solution of sodium hydroxide to neutralize it. All right, well, first things first, as always, we should write a balanced equation so we know actually what's going on here, right? Otherwise, you know, you're just, you're just shooting in the dark here. It doesn't make any sense. Sulfuric acid, in case you're not aware, is H2SO4. And if you weren't aware of that, there's an acid base chart in your uh, data booklet 
you could have found it there, or you could have remembered that ic acid, so something ic acid is hydrogen blank eight. So this is hydrogen sulfate. Sulfate is SO4. It has a two negative charge, so you need two hydrogens on there. Whatever floats your boat, it's whatever, right? Anyway, sulfuric acid H2SO4 is going to combine with sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, because sodium has a positive one charge and hydroxide has a negative one charge. Anyway, those are going to combine. It's going to do a neutralization reaction. Neutralization reactions always produce two things. The first thing it produces is water, so H2O. But when you do it this way, don't write it as H2O. Change it so it's HOH, right? It's still two H's and one O, so it's still H2O. But at least this way you see a little bit more clearly what happens to your hydroxide, your OH. The other thing that a neutralization reaction produces is something that we just call in chemistry a salt. It's not always NaCl, like not sodium chloride, like we usually would deal with. Uh, but a salt is just something that forms from an acid-base neutralization reaction. Really, it's just the other product uh, of a double replacement reaction. So you can think of the hydrogen joining with the OH. Uh, so the sodium has to combine with a SO4, the sulfate, right? Now, remember, sulfate has a two negative charge and uh, sodium has a one positive charge. So we're going to need to make this Na2SO4, okay? Because this needs to balance out the charge on the SO4. Uh, next thing we got to do is, of course, balance this. So I think I just need to put a two in front of here. And now we have two sodiums, two sodiums, two hydroxides. Oh, only one hydroxide. So I've got to put a two in front of here. Uh, and then that means I have two hydrogen. Oh, and I have two hydrogen over here. So this is now balanced, right? So there's a little bit more work to it than the other one, uh, but still not a huge amount. Uh, in terms of states, you don't need to list states here. I mean, we know these are aqueous and we know this is a liquid. And then you could use your solubility chart to find this, but it doesn't say anything about finding uh, a precipitate or anything. So you know what? We don't really care, right? Now, the next thing we need to do, according to our steps, is calculate the number of moles of the given. All we were given for the sulfuric acid was its volume. That's not enough information to find how many moles we have. But for sodium hydroxide, we were given not only the volume, but also the concentration. Notice that the concentration is moles over liters. We could set that equal to some number of moles, which is unknown over some number of liters, which we have. So let's start by doing that. 0 0.510 moles per liter equals some number of moles, we'll just call it N, over some number of liters, which is 0 0.500. Multiply that over to the other side, and you're going to see that N is equal to 0 0.255 moles. And just keep in mind that that's for your NaOH, your sodium hydroxide. Okay. Step three. Use your molar ratio to calculate the moles of the required chemicals. So in other words, use your numbers in front of each compound. Notice we know how many moles of NaOH we have. That's gonna represent two parts. So this right here is two parts. What we're looking for, for the required chemical, is sulfuric acid, because we're looking for the concentration of sulfuric acid. And just in case I haven't already mentioned it, because I honestly can't remember, it's moles per liter is concentration, we know how many liters we have, so clearly we need to find how many moles we have so we can go moles divided by liter. Anyway, so in other words, we're trying to find the number of moles of sulfuric acid. And if we go back to our formula here, we have two parts of NaOH, but we only have one part of this. So that means we need to take this two parts and divide it by two to get one part. And remember, we can only do that. We can only do that divide by two with one part thing with our number of moles. We couldn't have done it with the concentration and this and all that. At least I don't believe we could have, maybe I'm wrong, um, but it's always safe, just go to your, your number of moles, right? Anyway, so 0 0.255 divided by two, this is going to give us 0 0.1275 moles, and that's our number of moles of H2SO4. It's a two there, there you go. All right, so we now know how many moles we have of H2SO4. Last things is uh, use the number of moles uh, of the required to calculate the required variable. Our required variable is concentration. Concentration equals moles per liter. So concentration is gonna need uh, equal our number of moles, 0 0.1275 moles over our number of liters, which was 350 milliliters, so 0 0.350 liters. Long story short, this is going to give us uh, to, I guess, look, three sig digs, three sig digs, three sig digs. So it's going to be three sig digs for our answer. 0 0.364 moles per liter. Thrilling, totally thrilling. I bet you guys are just like blown out of your seats right now.
with how amazing this stuff is. Wow. All right. Well, if you're if you're amazed now, just be prepared to even be more amazed. There's some worksheet, quote unquote, questions uh, in the handout. It literally is just the next page of the handout. I noticed on the handout that the first two questions have answers uh, like provided in the question. Uh, but question three and question four don't have answers. That's a little suspicious. Um, give them a try anyway. I'll be in the uh, Zoom if you need me for any help. I'm not going to post an answer key for this. I don't think it's really uh, necessary. But if you need any help, please jump into the Zoom and we're all good to go.